Hi, today I will try convincing myself why I don't need this Triumph Street Triple in my life. And you might not either. Give me more. I need this in my life. I want one. if you forgot the make of your own motorcycle. I mean, it can happen, right? You own something for so long that it just slips out of your mind. Triumph, in their wisdom, decided to remind you at every opportunity. That's why they have their logo on the dash, on the gas tank, on the foot pegs, on the engine, on the seat, on the fairings. I wouldn't be surprised to find a logo on the inside of the tire or as a tattoo on the king's leg. But you look a bit more and you start to notice the lines. So quintessentially British, inspired by the same pot that the Aston Martin designers consume. The indicator is located in the lower position, hugging a line that's meant to make the fuel tank look low and mean. The bee-like headlights with a subtle aggressive LED brow that perfectly combines with a little windshield. Yes, it's about as useful as the monarchy, but that's tradition. It's something that we got to appreciate with time. Your eyes can't abstain. They go further and further back and lock into the sweeping swing arm. Arm that's perfectly balanced out of an underbelly exhaust that begs to be kept stock simply for the looks. So British. That's what my eyes see. But there's no going around it. It's an acquired taste. Like sugar in coffee. When you get into it, you can't see the black liquid with all the sweetness. But as you experience more, you get to really appreciate the raw taste without the disturbance. In a sense, this is the triumph too. If you're a kid seeing your first motorcycles, you would throw the picture of the triple to the garbage can. It's not for everyone. But then you grow up and start to appreciate the finer things in life. And with it, your eyes start to mold more and more on the spike's iconic lines. Age is a funny thing. It brings with it an appreciation for the classic, for elegance. Also for stability. Woo! <laughs> it's so stable! How can it be so stable for a middleweight? How can it be so stable at high speeds? Like, it's, on, it's genuinely on rails. It's, I feel like it might be more stable than my Super Duke. This Triumph is the most stable experience I've ever had on two wheels. And I did not expect that. It's the opposite of a teenager in the American school system. If the maglev was a motorcycle, this would be it. It leans deep into a corner and stays there, unmoved by bumps in the road, nature, human error. It hugs the line and stays there, waiting for your next command. It's the Alfred to Batman, really smart, has seen a lot, and knows exactly what and when you need it. Just like I know that you might want to subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Sure, the bike knows exactly what to do, but sometimes us, the riders, we don't know what to do. And we have a little moment, a moment when our last savior is consisting of a spinning metal disc being pressed on by some small little pads. I don't break so. I barely touched them and they instantly respond. I am amazed. And to be honest, I did not think that a middleweight can ever get to this type of braking performance. But wow, the minute I put my leg over, it inspired more confidence than Norway's economic situation. It was like meeting an old friend, kind of like I knew how these brakes would feel before even trying them out. A few years ago, when I first jumped on my Super Duke, I had a sensation like no other. I was braking too much. The brakes were so good that I just pressed the lever for too long and stopped too early. Ever since that moment, I never felt the same. I tried really good braking system, but somehow this little Brit brought me back to those days. One finger braking at over 100 km per hour, no effort, more predictable than the Queen's routine. I was shocked, in the best way possible. And then, speaking of shocks, I got to use the quickshifter and blipper. Which were astounding. Yes, a big word. 
but no less of a word shall be used for describing the shift of this technology. Any corner, no matter the speed or the lean angle, I could upshift effortlessly to try and always be in the right RPM range. Slowing down feels like having your own personal server, gently laying your cup of tea into your hands while politely asking for another biscuit. In comparison, the Ducati I rode a few months earlier feels like Conor McGregor delivering your hot coffee while having you in a chokehold. See that? It does that. I tried to use the blipper from third to second and it just bumped it into neutral. And all this is a bit of a problem. I know it's a spoiled thing to say, but I almost felt like the 765 is a bit too good, too refined. You could almost get bored of it. It does so many things so well that it's almost a bit too clinical almost too good. And you might know my stance on this. The bike being good on paper is not enough. These machines choose you, you don't choose them. If we picked a bike with our brains only, we would all end up riding 125cc scooters or Hondas. But we don't. We need to feel something, to feel alive and human. And this triumph almost doesn't. Five elements were believed to compose our surrounding world. Five senses that made us who we are today. Five Olympic rings symbolize absolute greatness. And five times I wrote almost in the script paragraph above. Because the triumph is almost too good. Almost. Because it has one last striking ace up its sleeve. The engine. And the sound! Wow, the sounds so good! <laughs> Did you hear that? This power plant is still clinical, incredibly well behaved, no jumpiness, no misbehaviors. It's a straight A doctor with a family and a good life. But when the night falls, this doctor transforms into a raging metalhead, yelling and screaming his way through the party. He is another person, unchained. Release him and you are having the time of your life. That's what gives this bike the character. It's one simple element. The one that's so unique, it sounds incredible and pulls just as well. The power delivery is so confidence inspiring, man. Like, I realize it's not giving me everything it's got, especially in this first and second gear. But I'm kind of wondering, do I want everything it's got? It allows you to properly twist the throttle, to feel alive. And that's actually credit that can go to the designers too. You have a dashboard, pretty beautiful if you ask me, but it's situated really low. You don't notice it initially, but you do notice the sensation of speed. It's like being in a tunnel, things are blurred around you and that's because of the dash and how low it sits. It makes you lose your bike as the reference point and that gives an amazing sensation of speed. Such an amazing bit of design. Now, no bike is perfect. And, well, this British feat of engineering isn't either. One could argue that low in the revs, it doesn't pull quite like a twin would. One could argue that the gears are weirdly spaced out, to the point where between 4th and 6th you feel like it's all one and the same gear. You could argue that the brake line comes in front of the dash, blocking the view of the most common RPM range. And most importantly, you could argue that it's a bit too serious. And you wouldn't be wrong. KTM will give you more thrills. It would be like riding a bull compared to this British noble horse. It's not the most doesn't change direction as easy as some other more twitchy bikes, right? Compared to a Hornet, it feels a bit sluggish to the direction. You really can't have everything. Our life is just a mix of compromises. And that's the story of the Triumph too. In a quest to become the best, you could say it forgot to have a bit of fun. It's a bit straight edge. A bit too serious. To be honest, I don't think about you. To be honest, I got better I set out to justify why I don't need this triumph in my life. Reasons to curb my enthusiasm, to stop me from liking it. And I did find some reasons not to like it. But the issue is, I didn't like it from the first time I put my leg over it. I 
freaking love that. It does so many things so well. Yes, it's a bit clinical, but it knows how to get out of that, how to have fun. It's such a great balance that honestly, I'm tempted. I need to resist, but it won't be easy. Give me all the d's. All the d's, baby triumphs. All the d's. Thanks for watching this video, you can check out a more budget alternative in the form of the new Honda Hornet. A sub would be appreciated and until next time, have a good one. Bye.